So, did you bring a, a cup of coffee? Oh, got some water. Tea, a tea, something to drink, and listening this this uh, class. Yes, do you have everything? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Uh, okay, great. So, today we are going to review a model that the name of this model is financial accounting. So I would like to know if you have any knowledge. Okay, this, uh, this is the overview of the model. Uh, we are going to have three topics and obviously each topic uh, has it, its own uh, points. So basically we are going to cover all the topics during this class, but if we are not covering all the topics, we are going to leave some topics for the next, but I, I, I think that we, are, we have enough time. Okay. But you know, if you have any doubt or if you want to discuss a particular point uh, deeply, just let me know. Okay. And these are the topics that we are going to discuss today. Uh, one is a value inventory, and we are going to see different types of inventory, valuation methods, and which method is more recommended. Uh, number two, uh, in, number, uh, in topic number two, we are going to discuss what are uh, the most common adjustments uh, on the financial statements of a company. And we are going to try to understand why is the reason of having these adjustments. So we are going to review a, a, another a concept like a reverse or depreciation or um, a, a obsolescence so many topics that we are going to to discover in topic number two and finally in, in number uh, in the topic number three uh, this is a, the closing of this model because we are going to know why is it important uh, to prepare financial accounts for sole traders and partnerships so this is a closing part of this model in which we are going to understand why is the reason of having topic number one and topic number two. But before starting, I would like to know if you have heard something about inventory, inventory in companies. Do you have any knowledge about inventory or could you tell me please uh, maybe if you don't have any knowledge, uh, what do you imagine that inventory is? Um, I know what inventory is. I don't know if in terms of finance. It's just um, so it'd be sort of the products you own. And then I imagine this is just, just sort of mm -hmm. evaluating okay. your inventory. Okay. So, for example, if I, if I, if I told you, uh, give me what is inventory of Apple? Right, so like I, iPhones, iPads, iMac, that sort of thing. Sorry, can you repeat? So like uh, iPhones, iPads, iMac. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Or if I told you, what is inventory of Tesla? It'd be cars, cars, it's... trucks, just like that. Exactly, yes, this is inventory. So according to the industry of uh, every country, every, every company, we are going to have different types of inventory. Maybe uh, on, uh, in, in the case of Apple, uh, we would think, okay, phones, no? But then phones, but probably Apple, they need to have the material to create an iPhone. So probably uh, Apple uh, has an inventory of uh, screens, no? Another, another inventory of uh, chips, another inventory, probably the inventory of the cases, for, for the iPhone. So even when, when Apple has 
inventory, we are going to find different kinds of inventory. But yes, basically inventory is all that uh, all these things that the companies uh, have to to sell or or is a, is the core of the company. You no, know? are the the products and the things that the company used to sell. So yes. Okay. Uh, this is inventory. So according to the, to the industry of the company, we are going to have a different kind of inventories. But um, now to start this topic, we are going to discuss, uh, first of all, if I see a balance sheet where the inventory is. That's so the, you know, after exactly in in the assets right so do you remember uh, what is the balance sheet um it's just assets versus liabilities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes but, uh, a balance sheet is a financial statement don't, don't don't forget that it's a financial statement that shows the financial position of the company it means what are the rights that the company has and what are the obligations and what is the money that the, 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 the partners uh, has, uh, have in, uh, invested in, in the company. So a uh, mm -hmm. balance sheet shows the financial position in the company in, in, in a certain period of time because this balance could be at the end of the year, maybe in December, or maybe we can have financial statements at the end of September. So balance sheet is a dynamic uh, financial statement because this, uh, balance, this financial statement is going to change every month or even every day because the transactions that, that the company has are recorded every day. So even we can have one balance sheet every day so every day we can see what are the rights, what are the things that the company owes and what are the, the obligations. So the, the basic formula of the balance sheet, uh, as you said, is assets is equal to liabilities plus shareholder equity. So these two parts, these two uh, sections, needs to be equal so it means that if we have 100 pounds in assets we need to have the same amount if we if we if we have uh, for example 50 uh, 50 pounds in liabilities and 50 in shareholder equity or i don't know 30 and 70 but the thing is that balance sheet needs to be balanced all the time the amount of assets and the amount of liabilities and shareholder equity needs to be the same so now that we uh, remember a uh, balance sheet now where is the in inventory so inventory as you say is in the asset part because it's a, a thing that the company owes so inventory is part of the rights of the company so uh, in in the in this section in 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 the asset normally all the all the concepts needs to be uh, placed in the balance sheet according to the availability that they have. For example, first, we have cash and cash equivalent because it's the asset, it's the easiest asset. Uh, if, you want, if we want cash, we can get it easily. Then accounts receivable, then inventory, then prepaid expenses and all. On. So inventory is allocated in current assets because it's an asset that is moving all the time that we can sell easily, but probably is not a, is not very easy. Like uh, for example, cash. That if we want cash, uh, if the company needs cash, uh, the company can only use the bank's account and that's it. And in and in the inventory, maybe the company needs to do a more complicated process like maybe sold this inventory or moved inventory to a certain location, but is a current asset because it's moving 
at the end, these, these um, concepts are moving all the time. It's easy to, to get it. So inventory, we can find here inventory assets, but in current assets. So inventory is allocated here in the rights of the company. Now, let's see the definition of inventory. So, the term inventory refers to raw materials. This is the thing that I was telling you, raw materials using production as well as good uh, products that are available for sale. So, <clears throat> for example, uh, imagine a company that is a manufacturing company. They, they, this company have a raw material. Maybe it's a company that uh, is manufacturing bicycles. So the raw material could be steel or could be plastic or could be, I don't know, many things, no? Raw material are the basic material then the company needs to put this material in a production in order to have a, a, a complete product, a, a product that will be sell. Um, a company inventory represents one of the most important assets. Why? Because it's the core of the company, is the thing that the company is selling. And we have here, a turn a concept that is called turnover for in of inventory. That uh, turnover of inventory is how many times the inventory needs to be purchased. For example, if we uh, are selling uh, bicycles, so probably we need to to buy all the all the things to create a buy a bicycle twice per year. So the turnover of inventory is how many times uh, the company will need to have this product to create a bicycle. So maybe maybe with, with this turnover of inventory, the, the management of the company uh, is more uh, uh, ways to, 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 to buy things and to create um, more specific budgets. But what happened if the company is purchasing a lot of products, a lot of raw materials, but at the end, the company doesn't sell the final product. So it means that probably the company is going to, to buy many things that the company doesn't need. So obviously, if, they, if the company buys a lot of things that uh, it doesn't need, uh, the, the, the profit would be less. So turnover inventory is a good way to know how, uh, how much or how much quantity, how, how much, uh, how many things the company needs to buy. And uh, to, to understand a little bit more about the inventory, we have three types of inventory. So keep in mind that we are talking about manufacturing companies. These, these three types of inventory uh, apply only for manufacturer, manufacturing companies. So the first one is raw materials that are all the supplies that the company needs to uh, create finished goods, then work in process that when the raw material uh, materials enter a process maybe to, um, I don't know, to create the bicycle. This is a work in process inventory. And then when the product is totally finished, we have another type of inventory that is called finished goods, that uh, finished goods are ready for sale. And in the case of another sectors, for example, sectors that are not manufacturing, that they probably they they these companies that used to buy uh, finished goods uh, that other company created. Uh, obviously, in this kind of, of industries or in this kind of companies, uh, we are going to find only finished goods. Imagine, uh, I don't know. Um, let's think an example probably um, a supermarket. 
So, obviamente, ob obviously, a, a supermarket doesn't buy a raw material or work in process. A supermarket only buys uh, finished goods. So if we see the balance sheet of a supermarket, we are going to find inventory, but the inventory uh, will be created only with finished goods. Uh, a supermarket that doesn't have raw, raw material or working process because it's not a manufacturing uh, company. But what is a raw material? What are the most important uh, characteristics of a uh, raw material? Uh, basic materials that a manufacturer purchases from suppliers. And in this uh, inventory, it's important to mention that the that, uh, raw materials needs to be divided or are classified in two groups direct materials or indirect materials. We are going to talk about uh, this specific point in a while. But sometimes uh, raw materials can be declared obsolete. It means that we cannot use any more this material because maybe uh, these materials has expired or maybe because these materials are not the, the are not in the best trend. If we think, for example, in 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 the fashion industry, for many things, uh, raw materials can can be declared obsolete. And when the materials, when raw materials are declared uh, obsolete, uh, the the cost of these uh, obsolete materials. It needs to be charged to the cost of, of the product. It, it means uh, when we have a inventory that is uh, that we cannot use anymore. Obviously, the company has purchased it, this material. He has uh, paid money for these materials. So this this uh, loss uh, of money is included in the cost of the new products. So for that reason, it's important to keep in mind this, uh, this, this ratio, the turnover of inventory in order to avoid uh, obsolescence. So <clears throat> when, company when the companies have uh, inventory that is declared uh, obsolete, uh, obviously it decreases uh, it's it's profit and obviously the products increase in in some some of the cases so it's better to avoid uh, this kind of uh, inventory um and uh, some examples of uh, raw material could be steel oil corn grains gasoline lumber uh, for resources, plastic, natural gas, many things of uh, a raw material, good, all other products that need to be transformed. So this is raw material. And to talk a little bit more about this second point, uh, the direct and indirect materials, Direct materials are the material that are incorporated to the, to the final product. It means it's the most important material. Uh, these are the components of the product that the company is selling. But what happened with the indirect material? Uh, in, in, direct, in, in the case of uh, direct materials, we can identify the raw material. So for example, a knife. Probably the most important product if we are creating knives is uh, steel. So the direct material is the steel. Or let's think we are creating um, tables. No, probably the table, the most important material of a table could be good or could be plastic. So it's very easy to identify direct materials because are the most important material in the product. But what happened with indirect materials? These are materials not incorporated in the final product or not directly, but uh, that are consumed during the production process. If we think in the table, 
probably we will need a, I don't know a, a process in which, uh, in which the table needs to be um, I don't know maybe we need to to use glue for 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 for, for this uh, table so the glue is incorporated to the table but it's not easy to to identify this could be an example or maybe we could need um i don't know maybe a process uh, in order to have a, the correct size of the table so this process maybe for this process we will need a, a specific uh, machine so the cost of the use of this machine is one of a, is an example of an in, uh, of indirect material because it is included in the process to create a table but it's not uh, easy to identify or we cannot say okay we are going we we need to use uh, three ti three times of of uh, this machine or we are we need to use this amount of using of this machine. So we cannot identify and indirect materials, but indirect materials are included in the cost of the final product. One of the examples is think about a wooden clock. Then a direct material would be the wood because it's the principal materials. It's the principal material, but what happened with the glue? The glue is less easily quant uh, quantifiable. So it could be a, a indirect material. So remember, direct materials is the main product to create a material and indirect material is a product that is not easy to recognize it in, in, in the final product or that is a process that we need to include or we need to cross in order to have a final product. And then, till here, do you have any, any question about uh, raw materials? Because this is the first type um, of inventory. No, I think it's straight. I think that's straightforward enough. Okay, it's yeah. easy to understand raw material. Yeah, so what happened? Just... Uh-huh, yes, sir? No, that's fine. I was just gonna say the direct stuff is just what is okay. directly linked to the product. And you can tell what it is indirect it would be something that's used to manufacture like mm -hmm. coal or something like that something used for fuel or something not directly linked to it mm -hmm. yeah. right okay. okay so the next the next type of uh, inventory is working process working process is when we have identified the raw material and we need to put this raw material in a certain process in a certain stage uh, to to create a final product so working process is a production and supply change management term describing partially finished goods awaiting for completion so in this stage we don't have raw product but we don't have a final uh, final product so the stage between draw, raw material and finished good is a working process so in in this process we need to add many many things not only the things uh, of using machines for example in this process in fact we need to add if we are uh, using for example people to create this material how many hours of the uh, how many hours employees have worked to create this material so um, for example if we are paying 10 pounds per hour no to uh, an employee so the employee uh, uses to um, work during uh, two hours to create a product so we need to add these two hours it means 20 pounds to the final product so in this part even we need to add for example labor 
in uh, in order to to know how 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 many hours the employees are using um, to create the the final product. In this in this stage, we need to add, for example, electricity. What happened if we need a process in um, a process in which we need to use uh, some tools that uh, includes electricity? So we need to say, okay, uh, probably I'm going to add one pound because I use this machine and this machine uses electricity. And additionally, in, in, in on this in, on this stage, uh, we can we can include everything that we need to create the product, but only to create, not not uh, not another things, because then we are talking about the, uh, the the final product. So in this stage, we are going to include all the things that we need, all the costs, all the cost. Uh, direct, indirect, uh, external, internal, uh, that the material, that the product needs. Um, yes, and the third point, uh, we need to include human labor. And then all these all this, all this, uh, costs are going to be transferred to the finished goods. So till for example, if we think uh, in or in in Apple, in the company Apple, probably uh, the the working process uh, inventory for Apple is which is in in which Apple has this this um, factory with a lot of employees uh, creating. Uh, uh, iPhones, no. When someone is putting the screen, and another is including the chip, another is uh, putting I don't know maybe the plastic part, or maybe with with another employee is uh, putting the camera or the lessons, and all this process to create a final product is work in process, and obviously work in process has a value. Okay, uh, one of the examples is uh, if we have a, a company that sells coffee, the, the working process inventory could include bags, labels, coffee beans, shipping boxes, uh, probably they use uh, the cost of using this machine. So all the things that are included in the final products, in the final product, uh, uh, needs to be included in in working process, and then finally we have finished goods. Finished goods are the products that are ready to be sold in the market, or or are ready to 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 be packaged to be packaged, and then uh, to be distributed. So these are finished goods. But in finished goods, we need to include another cost. What if uh, we need to pay a rent of a space to, to keep our, our fi finished goods in a specific location? So we need to divide this rent that we are paying to keep our stock in a certain location. We need to include the cost of the rent in finished goods. Or what if uh, we need to pay a uh, deliver to in order to give this product to different supermarkets? So the cost of transport this product, the cost of uh, deliver uh, these these products, is going to be included in finished goods. Or what happen if we need? to have um, some advertisement and maybe coming back to the case of Apple, uh, we need to have uh, certain expenses in order to sell uh, the last iPhone. So these, these kind of things needs to be in, in, need to be included in, in the cost of finished goods. 
because they need to be ready to be sold. Um, so in this case, we don't have any any other uh, stage uh, to that implies a process to create to include because they are ready to sell. And uh, finished goods are divided in two groups as uh, in the raw material uh, in, in direct and indirect. In this case is on processed foods or processed foods or processes uh, goods, no? Because maybe this is a kind of difficult if we think uh, for example, in vegetables, no vegetables that are sold in a supermarket. No, this is a raw material. Uh, for example, think uh, a lettuce. Think in a lettuce. This is a raw material, or this is a finished good, or with, which kind of of product is this product? This product is a finished good because probably even when it's a raw material that maybe it's very easy to identify the main component of a lettuce, that is the, the lettuce. So maybe we would think that, oh, probably this is a raw material, but I'm pretty sure that when this lettuce went to the, to the supermarket, this lettuce have a process, Many, maybe someone cleaned the lettuce or, or, or maybe someone put the lettuce in a bag. So uh, this is a, an unprocessed uh, product because obviously the, the, the lettuce uh, doesn't imply any, any process, but probably the process for the lettuce is only cleaning and putting in, in, in a bag. So this is, a not, this is not a raw material, this is an unprocessed uh, food. Or what is an example or processed uh, food? Probably uh, a bottle of juice, no? Because obviously a bottle of juice or a box of juice implies a processes a process, no, in which we take the fruit, the company that created this juice took the fruit and then transform in a juice, put in a bottle or in a box, and then uh, the company sold this product to a supermarket. And now the supermarket is offering this product that is ready, that is ready to be consumed uh, or to be sold. So these are the two differences in finished goods. And we have here uh, more examples about finished goods that uh, raw materials obviously is an apple, working process is when the, the apple is processing, uh, is using a specific process and finished goods is when the product is ready to be sold. And, or for example, a bicycle, no? Raw material could be these parts uh, made by steel or by good or wherever, plastic. A working process is when we have all the, all the parts and we need to uh, put them together in order to have a finished good that is a bicycle, a bicycle that is ready to be sold. So till here, I feel that these three types of inventory are very clear. And remember, keep in your mind that this is only for manufacturing uh, companies. Okay. Then, uh, obviously in manufacturing companies, you can find these three types of, uh, um, of, of uh, inventory, but uh, uh, for for example, for companies that they don't have these three um, process, these three types of inventory, they used to buy the finished goods uh, from from a company, from a manufacturing company, or probably uh, I don't know if uh, you have you do you know what is the concept of holding and subsidiary. 
what have you, you heard mean, about that whole uh, not stock yes uh, have you seen that some sometimes companies they have a main company that is a holding yeah. and and then the main company has some like uh, daughters and sons that yeah. are another companies that depend on the main company yeah we have that at, um, at my place so we'd be like a Ah, like okay. brother or sister company of our bigger company ah okay so normally yeah. in this kind of companies one of the companies one of the siblings companies one of the subsidiaries not the main company one of the subsidiaries is the 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 company that is in church to create to produce everything and the other company is the company in church to sell the product so normally even when we cannot see the three types of inventory in a certain company of the of the subsidiaries maybe because the production is in one company and this company when this company that the manufacturing company finish all the all the things to to have finished good goods this company the manufacturing used to uses to sell to the company in charge to distribute the products so in uh, with my example i want to tell you that even when we talk about the same company again apple maybe apple the holding is apple but maybe apple could we have different subsidiaries one in charge to elaborate all the iPhones another in charge to sell the, the 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 iPhones so in which we are going to find these different types of inventory maybe in the in the subsidiary that is in charge of um of the uh, of manufacturing uh, the iPhone so it doesn't mean that Apple doesn't have a section to create or a section of manufacturing. So I, 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 I have seen that many companies uh, used to do that, having one company only to manufacturing, another only to sell. So it's important to, that you know that uh, because uh, and sometimes it's, it's difficult to see the whole picture of a company, that the company has many, many small companies into the main company, into the holding. Okay, so now we are talking about inventory valuation. Inventory valuation is an accounting practice that is followed by, followed by companies to find out the value of unsold inventory stock it's this is, is to find the value of our inventory of the or the inventory of the company in a specific date in a specific time in order to present financial statements so um obviously inventory needs to have a financial value and uh, again, we, we, we have this concept uh, turnover ratio, that is how many times the inventory needs to be purchased. Uh, so companies need to have the value of the inventory to determine the turnover ratio and to determine how many times the inventory needs to be purchased. And uh, we have three types of inventory methods of techniques. One is FIFO, or the other is uh, LIFO, and the other is average cost, uh, cost uh, depending on uh, the sector, depending on the uh, industry of the company, uh, we are going to use uh, one of them. Um, basically, FIFO, uh, is first item purchase are the first to leave the, the warehouse. So in this kind of a uh, method, uh, the, the first, for example, if we buy um, a product, um, I don't know, a piece of good uh, at the beginning of the year, 
uh, this 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 piece of good of good uh, that maybe the cost is one pound needs to leave the 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 war the warehouse uh, first. So the cost of this is one pound. Even when the next one that we bought, uh, the cost uh, was like two pounds. The first item purchase is the first item that we need to leave the warehouse and that or that the first item that uh, needs to be used and uh, lipo is the opposite so the last item in is the the first out so if we think about the, the whole year, the, the items using LIFO, the items that uh, were purchased uh, at the end of the year, these items needs to be uh, sold or it needs to be used at the beginning of the year. So it's totally opposite to FIFO. LIFO is uh, last in, first out. And obviously, depending on, on the industry, we are going to use uh, a FIFO or LIFO. And in the case of average cost, cost is um, basically an average of the cost because every day when we, when the company buys a new item, the the average cost needs to be calculated in order to have only one cost or only one cost for all the items. So we need to divide the number of pieces or the number of items uh, that we have in the warehouse and the valuation. So the valuation even, for example, if the valuation of the, of the inventory is 10 pounds and we have uh, 10, 10 items, so the cost of every item is one pound because uh, the, 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 the cost uh, will, will, be re, will be the same all the time in, in, the, in the average uh, cost method. But we are going to see some examples. Uh, one of these examples is imagine that you have a shoe business and you have uh, 50 pairs that you cannot sell this uh, you, you you couldn't you couldn't sell these 50 pairs of shoes at the end of the year but you need to calculate the financial value of the inventory so the first thing that we need to do in order to choose uh, the, the technique or, or the method is identify the unsold items to, to know what would be the cost of, of, the, of the item and then we, what, uh, how much will be the cost or the valuation of the inventory. So uh, is this we, like, um, you know, these different methods would they be used on say the same amount of stock? It's just a different way of determining the value. So say you've got 10 with the first in first out, you just times it by how much you paid for the first item to figure out. Mm, yes, you mean that, you mean that? Uh, I mean, the evaluation is done on what's left, not your total stock from the year. You just evaluate in the inventory you have less for your balance sheet. Exactly. You need okay. to, to evaluate your inventory with the products that you have in your inventory. The, the right. products that, that uh, you, can, you couldn't uh, sell. Okay. So this is just how we mm -hmm. estimate sort of the value of the inventory mm -hmm. of that. Okay. Exactly. Yes. So imagine that we have these 50 pairs of shoes that we have in uh, physically in our inventory. So what would be the cost of these 50 pairs of shoes? Uh, what would be the correct valuation for these 50 pairs of shoes that are still in the, in the warehouse? Okay. So according to different, uh, with the three methods, uh, Imagine we have let's let's uh, see this table. 
So in January, we bought 100, in March, 150, and every month we, we, we bought a different quantity of uh, shoes. No? And each quantity of shoes has uh, their own uh, price. So at the end of the year, we bought uh, 550 uh, pairs of shoes. And then we sold 500. So it means that in the warehouse, we have only 50, 50 pairs of shoes that are the 50 pair, pairs of shoes of the example of the example. So, but what is the inventory value? So it means that we need to use 30, 30, 30 pounds for each or 31 or 55, or what would be the, the most, um, the more specific cost uh, in order to have uh, the inventory value. So this question mark is, the, the, the cost or, or, or the quantity that we need to discover or that we need to decide in order to evaluate our inventory. So imagine that we are go, that we decide we, we have decided to use a FIFO first in, first out. So it means that first it first out. So it means that we are going to take 35, 35 because this was the cost of the items that uh, enter first. So 50 multiplied by uh, 35. But what happened if we are if we are using little? So it means that we are going we will use 30 because it's last in, uh, first out. So we are going to take this. And what happened if we, if we use, we decide to use the average cost. So it means that we need to divide our 50, 50 pieces, 50 pairs of shoes divided by the number of items that we have purchased and we will have a cost a cost that this cost is 31, 31.5. So all the time in, in the case of average cost, the cost will remain the same. So the cost uh, uh, won't, uh, the cost will be same and the cost never will be changed. So these are the different types of, of methods that we have. And if you see the valuation of each, me of each method is going to change according to the method. So for that reason, we need to be very careful to choose any of these methods because uh, we need to think about the industry. We need to think about the, the fluctuation of, of, on the prices. We need to think what are the goals of the company? What are the culture, the values, or what are uh, the, the things or the factor that represent the cost of the inventory uh, according to the economic situation? So for that reason, we need to be very careful using different type of methods and valuations. So, but what happened, for example, here, we have 50, 50, 50 items that we, we couldn't sell. But what happened if uh, we have and it's easy, no? Because here, for example, we have a 50 and, and the number of pair of, sh of shoes, we have 90. So it's easy to take a 35 or we, here we have 100. That is easy to take a 50 a, from this 100. But what happened if instead of having 50 pairs of shoes, we had 150? So Obviously, we, we, we couldn't complete these 150 pairs of shoes with the last, uh, uh, with, the, with, with, the, with the, um, 
unknown that we vote on, on December. We would need to take some of them from the items that we bought on October. So basically this is a uh, thing that we need to keep in mind that we need to be very uh, careful and we need to consider because in this case, if we use uh, FIFO, first in, first out, we will take 90, 90, 90 pairs of shoes and the cost will be 35. And because we complete uh, this, this uh, amount, we will need to take the next, uh, the next amount, uh, the next uh, pairs of shoes from the purchase that we buy, uh, that we bought in October. So it means that 35, 90 will be 35, 35 uh, we will use the price of 35 and the rest the 60 we will use the price of 31 so the valuation of, a, of our inventory will be changed so the total the valuation of our, our inventory within under this condition will be uh, 5010 5, 5, because we have two different prices so it's the same, for example, in LIFO. We, we will took 100 with the price of 30 and the rest, the, the rest of, uh, of the product that we need, 50, it means uh, 50 uh, using the price of 31. So obviously the valuation again will change. And what happened, this, this is uh, in the, under the uh, scenario of FIFO or LIFO, or what happened with average cost? In the average cost, we, we wouldn't have any change because on average cost, we are evaluating every day. So the cost is the same. So for that reason, 31 in, in uh, using average cost, the cost won't change. Uh, this example is clear to hear? Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, so if it's, um, if, if the stock you're evaluating the inventory is less than what you've just purchased, then you just do it within that month or that purchase, how much it was. But if it's more, then depending on if it's LIFO or FIFO, it's the one before or after. Exactly. Average is just average of everything. Exactly. So okay. for that reason, it's important to see the whole picture and to see uh, the, the, the purchase every month or every specific peri period in order to have the, the price that we pay for every purchase. So if, we, if the company is uh, buying items every day, we need to have a record of every day because we need to know what is the price of the material every purchase because obviously depending on, on the method uh, is necessary because we need to take the price or the rate of every purchase in order to evaluate the inventory in this example uh, we have a uh, month but even we we can have dates or hours or maybe some companies decide uh, to purchase every three months or every year, I don't know. But for that reason, it's earlier to record every purchase to, to know the, the cost of or the rate of every product. So uh, as you see, um in the in the example when uh, FIFO uh, value uh, when the the value of FIFO uh, is is um, bigger uh, is because we buy um, items uh, with a uh, with a high price but uh, opposite when when fifo is lay uh, is less than lifo is uh, because the 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 items 
that we buy at the end of the year were more expensive. So the thing uh, that I'm trying to show you is according to the method, the valuation of the inventory is going to change. And even you, according to the method, we can see the trends or the changes in the prices of every product. Even when the product is the same, we can see how every product uh, is fluctuating uh, during a period. Uh, this doesn't happen with uh, average cost because the average cost is always the same. Um, so, uh, 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 so basically this is uh, the, the, the calculation, the whole picture of the example using 150 pairs of shoes as the same as we have here. But uh, in order to see the whole picture, this is how uh, the calculation will be, will be shown uh, if we want to compare different methods of, um, of valuation. So basically, this is a, a summary of the calculation that we have here. <clears throat> And finally, um, I told you that according to the uh, industry, uh, we are going to use uh, FIFO, LIFO, or average cost. But, but the most common, for example, um, fashion industry, normally this industry uses FIFO. Why? first in first out because if we imagine that for example now we are uh, in a spring so most of the collection or most of the trends in in fashion industry is 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 uh, focus on probably colors like uh, baby colors being yellow so fashion industry needs to sell this product that the, the 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 fashion industry is creating for this season very fast because the, the the season is only four months so it means that all the things that the fashion industry creates in this period in the spring they need to be sold in this period too so for that reason probably most of the fashion companies um, use people first in first out because they have a very very small period to to sell specific products or let's think for example on christmas maybe a company that is uh, creating uh, chocolate they have this uh, beautiful chocolate only only for christmas so probably they need to to use FIFO in order to sell all these these products created only for Christmas. So this kind of this, for example, this chocolate company needs to finish all the inventory related to Christmas on Christmas. So the method for for this specific uh, company will be uh, FIFO. But what happened? With FIFO, last uh, in uh, first out, uh, this uh, is very common for industry related to food. Uh, example: a restaurant, because the the products uh, tend to expire very soon. They need the restaurant uh, need, need to use the product that enter. Uh, at the beginning to use it in order to use all the product because obviously food is so is 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 a product that expire very very soon. So FIFO is um, very common for uh, restaurants or for the industry that is related to uh, foods or with products that are easy to expire. 
And what happened with average cost? Average cost is uh, this kind of products that um, they don't have any specific date to expire or they don't have a very short period to be sold. For example, good or steel or maybe, I don't know, plastic and, or products that are created with plastic. For example, let, let's think in a bottle in a bottle uh, of uh, something, they, they don't, plastic is the raw material, but um, bottles, uh, the industry, imagine a company that is selling bottles, plastic bottles or plastic bags, they don't have a specific season. Or for example, plastic doesn't expire very soon. So basically uh, average cost is uh, for, raw material or uh, products that uh, don't spark easily. So we finish uh, the first topic. Um, do you feel tired? We can take 10 minutes and then come back with the last two. Uh, yeah, I just, um, I won't need 10 minutes, just got into the toilet quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. I, will, I will see you here in 10 minutes. Don't worry. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Cheers.
<clears throat> okay, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's continue. Uh, the, the topic for me, uh, number two, uh, we, we will review what are the uh, end year and uh, the year end adjustments and normally for this adjustment we would have a data to do these adjustments and uh, normally these adjustments are um, only at the end of the year or depending on uh, what is the normal period of the company normally is at the end of December, but there are some companies that the, that the year finish uh, maybe in March or in another month. But for most of the companies, uh, the, the, the year finishes uh, at uh, December. So these adjustments uh, help us to evaluate or to present uh, financial statements with a correct valuation. So for that reason, we need to do this adjustment. It's like to re rectify or to, to present the whole events, to present the, the reality in financial statements. So these, these adjustments uh, represent the opportunity to correct probably mistake mistakes or to um, to to do the things that we need to include in the financial statements but the things that that things probably we will uh, see the 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 effects of these things when the company finishes uh, the whole year and we will review the most um, important or the most frequent adjustments. We have plenty of adjustments, but we are going to see the most important or the most common uh, adjustments at the end of the year of the company. <clears throat> but what, what are the accounting adjustments? So, the accounting adjustments are all these business transactions that have not yet been included in the accounting records in a specific date. So remember a specific date because we are we we need to present financial statements. And <clears throat> most of the transactions are recorded daily or uh, frequently like for example, invoice or customer billing or uh, receipt uh, cash. And basically the company has this uh, accounting system to record every transaction uh, daily or, or, or uh, at the moment, no? But adjustments uh, refers to these transactions that we, we, we know at the end of the year or in a specific period that we need to do to, to correct mistakes. And <clears throat> some of these uh, adjustments could be set in a specific software. So this adjustment could be integrated in, in the accounting uh, software automatically, or we have uh, some adjustments that we need to calculate and then include in the accounting software. So we have uh, some adjustments that are set directly to the accounting software and we we don't need to do any more because the accounting software is uh, designed or is uh, set with this uh, automatic uh, feature to do these adjustments or we need to determine and then we need to include this this um, adjustment in, in the accounting software So adjustments uh, also mean that these are these transactions that have not been recorded uh, at the end of the accounting period 
or incorrectly states that impact uh, the transaction, the whole transaction, or if, or let's think if we uh, didn't do this adjustment, we cannot show the reality of the company at the end of the period. And, uh, and also we can think that we need to create this adjustment in order to uh, comply with a certain uh, framework, normally accounting framework, uh, for example, general accepted accounting principles or international financial reporting standards. Uh, some of the companies, for example, some local companies, they create uh, financial statements according to a local uh, framework, a local rule. But normally, even when some companies are local, they need to report financial statement in an accounting framework that maybe the local and the international framework is different. So for that reason, uh, companies need to prepare a financial uh, statements on your local base or international base. So it's different. So probably in order to present a financial statement in an international base, we need to create, we need to do certain uh, adjustments to, to present financial statement uh, according to these international financial reporting uh, standards. Have you have you heard about international financial uh, reporting standards or or any international framework? Um, uh, I don't think so. No. Okay. No. Um, uh, international financial uh, reporting standards are accounting standards that uh, most of the company most of the countries use. So it's not, for example, the same if we have a company here in the UK and under the UK framework, under the UK accounting standard, and if we have, for example, a company in the USA. So in order to compare a company here and a company in the USA, uh, companies tend to prepare two types of financial st statements, one of uh, under lo local basis and another two international financial reporting standard or uh, any other international standard. In order to compare, in order to create decision, uh, this international financial reporting standard, uh, one of the objectives, one of the goals is comparison, is to, to know uh, for example, to take decision, probably uh, an investor wants to invest uh, his money, her money in a company, but he uh, could he, he needs to know uh, the performance of each company, but probably the co one company is in another country and the another country, another company is in, uh, I don't know, in, in the company, in the country that the investor used to live. So in order to compare companies needs, in order to compare and in order to, to be more like attractive to the investors. Uh, companies uh, tend to use international standards to show uh, the investors uh, the, the performance of the company in order to compare and to harmonize uh, comparisons. So basically this is, uh, this is one of the most important objectives of uh, international uh, frameworks or international standards. And these international standards, in some cases, differs from local standards. It's for the reason that for, in order to prepare international uh, financial statements with an international framework, we need to integrate or we need to add adjustments. Uh, and also in accounting adjustments, uh, we have something called reversing entries. Reversing entries could be uh, probably if we made a mistake, uh, we need to correct this mistake. The, the thing that we can correct this mistake is reversing, is, 
erase the things that we did and uh, start again. So basically this is a reversing uh, entry. Uh, or for example, uh, if we have, uh, this could be one, one of the reason of reversing uh, that we, we made a mistake and we need to solve this mistake. This is one of the, this is one of the reason of reversing entries. And the other reason is because we need to clean certain financial statements. Uh, for example, we have here a, a, the balance sheet and we have here the income statement. Balance sheet is a financial statement that is and dynamic. Why? Because we can have a, the financial statement uh, anytime, any day, any month. So it will reflect the position of the company in certain period of the, of the, of the year, certain date of the year or certain month. But what happened with income statement? Income statement uh, reflects for uh, uh, the, the profit uh, or, or loss of the company at the end of the year. So it's for that reason that income statement is called, that is static. The uh, income statement is a uh, static uh, financial statement because this statement is going to reflect the reality only for one year because we have we need to report at the end of the year what is the profit or loss of the company but only for one year so at the end of the year we need to clear this financial statement income statement so for that reason probably we have many uh, uh, reversing entries in this financial statement because we need to delete everything at the end of the of the year and then the new year we need to uh, start again in order to know the profit of or, or lose but only for one year or only for one of the period no this doesn't happen with balance sheet we don't need to clear this balance sheet at the end of the period because the balance sheet uh, is going to continue for the rest of the life of the, of, the, of the company, but not financial statement. So when we are talking about correcting mistakes or when we are talking about a clear financial statement, we, we are talking about reversing entries. And the only financial statement, uh, statement in which we can clear the whole the whole figures is income statement. I don't know if I explained correctly this part of the income statement that we need to delete everything when we finish the 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 whole year. Is this clear? Yeah, no, 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 it's fine. Okay. Um, and uh, basically, this is a difference, or these are the concept of adjustments and reversing entries but what kind of adjustments we have what are the most common adjustments one of the most common is appreciation the term uh, depreciation refers to accounting method because at the end we have many many methods that are and techniques like uh, FIFO, uh, LIFO and average cost in inventory we have different methods but in depreciation too we we can have a, a straight line or we can have for example using a certain a rate or a, a certain specific a percentage and that we need to multiply this percentage for the value of an asset and we can have the depreciation of these assets so we have many methods but uh, for, for now, we are talking and we will uh, see the straight, uh, straight line method. That is the most common and is the most, uh, the easiest uh, method for depreciation. So uh, depreciation, uh, now we understand that this is a method that is, is um, this method is, is going to help us to know how much is the value of an asset that has been used. So 
is not the same when we uh, if if I if I bought a asset a fixed asset, it's not the same the value today of and the value at the end of the year or or the value after one or three months because normally uh, fixed assets tend to decrease their value during uh, during the time this is uh, because we are using these these uh, these fixed assets or because obviously in the market um, we can find new assets and uh, for example it means that the value uh, decreased for example uh, a car uh, vehicle no the the vehicle tends to decrease its value during the, the the time so this this um, this decrease is called depreciation and obviously we need to take in consider depreciation to show the correct value again the, to show the correct value of the assets in financial statements so we need to recognize this uh, decreasing on the uh, value of the assets uh, so uh, we need to include this depreciation till the value of the assets uh, becomes zero. So in a certain point of, 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 of the years, uh, we will see that an asset doesn't have value. Even when, when we can use the, the asset, in a certain point, this asset uh, the value of this asset, asset will be zero. So these are the most uh, common fixed assets in which we can in which in which we can find depreciation. Vehicles, uh, office furniture, or uh, computers, or uh, for example, software could be uh, all machinery and buildings and land but 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 land is the is, is an exception land tend to increase the value so because obviously vehicle is very easy that uh, for example today we can we can see i don't know the the a car let's think a porch in uh, and 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 2022, no, but the next year we will see the porch 2023. So it means that the value of the porch 2022 will decrease. Same is for in furniture, office, computer, machinery, buildings. But what happened with land? Land tends to increase the value because if we want to buy a, a land nowadays, maybe the value could be 1 million of pounds but ne the next year i'm pretty sure that the the value of this land is going to increase obviously we can have uh, some exemptions too but the the normal behavior of the land is increasing so uh, land is one is uh, one exception so land normally doesn't have depreciation land has amortization because it increased so according to a straight line method it's very easy uh, imagine that we have a delivery truck that is purchased in 100 100 pounds and then uh, we we think and we analyze that the life of this truck is going to be five years. So we need to divide the 100, the cost of the truck, divided by uh, five years, and we will we will have that the depreciation is 20, 20, 20 pounds every year. So one of the adjustments that we need to do and the, that we need to include in the financial statements is this 20 pounds because we are decreasing the life of the truck and uh, after five years 
the 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 cost of the truck will be zero because we are recognizing this use uh, this, this using this uh, this this life of of the of the fixed asset this life of the truck so this depreciation is one of the adjustments that we need to do when we finish uh, the, the the year or probably the company could decide okay i'm not going to wait till finish the year i'm going to recognize these 20 pounds every month so it means that the company would need to divide these 20 pounds that is per year divided by the 12 months of the year and the company would need to recognize this amount every every month so but at the end this is an adjustment that the company needs to do to reflect the reality in the financial statements so um the, the basic uh, journal entry to, to affect depreciation is when we have a debit in the depreciation spent, uh, expense uh, account in, in the income, income statement. And the other part is accumulated depreciation account in the balance sheet. I don't want to enter very deeply in this kind of concept because I know that sometimes um, accounting is kind of complicated if you don't have this background but I would like to mention and the most important I feel that is to understand the depreciation if you understand what is the depreciation I feel the the accounting recording is easy but the most important thing is that you can understand the depreciation. So, or do you understand this kind of uh, a journal entry in accounting? Uh, I've not done anything with them. No. no. So I feel that this is going to create a confuse, uh, confusion. So I'm not going to enter very, very deeply on this. No, that's fine. Is it basically just so, <clears throat> is it just spreading out the cost of the asset? along the years, is that basically what we're doing? Exactly. The cost of 100 divided by five. So you're just saying, instead of it costing 100 pounds in this year, it'll mm -hmm. cost 20 pounds every year. Exactly. So okay. basically we are we will need to decrease the these 20 pounds every year because we are we are considering that the life of the truck is five years. So depreciation is going to decrease. For example, if we see the, the balance sheet, depreciation is going to decrease um, to, 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 to here. Right. Uh, so proper, property plan, if you see here, we have 2019 and mm -hmm. we have a depreciation in which we are recognizing the depreciation because this depreciation is decreasing the value of the property plan and equipment. Right. So okay. that's just saying on that balance sheet, it's saying that the asset is worth less. Exactly. So in this part, we have the the specific value, the specific uh, amount of money that we paid for for this uh, property plant and equipment, and then we can see that probably at this point. Uh, we have uh, a depreciation or a decrease in the value of this uh, fixed asset, and for that reason, the 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 valuation of the property plan equipment is is less, even when we um, paid for for it more money, but with the depreciation is less. So basically, the depreciation show uh, this loose. Uh, that is related to the to the life of the asset. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the entries. This this is one of the adjustments that we need to do. So this is a precision. This is one of the adjustments that we need to do every year or every month. Or we if with the company hasn't done this uh, this calculation every month or every per every period. Uh, the, the company had the opportunity to, to include the whole depreciation at the end of the year as an adjustment. Or maybe the company noticed 
uh, notices that uh, he has recognized uh, depreciation wrongly. So at the end of the, peri of the period, the company can um, uh, correct this mistake and include the part that was not included or decrease the part that was included and is not true. So this is the precision. Even uh, if you remember that I told you that some companies uh, use uh, this uh, software, in use, uh, this accounting software in which they can set that uh, adjustment uh, automatically, the precision okay. could be set automatically. So do the employees or the accountant uh, doesn't need to include the precision. They could set automatically in the software and the, and the depreciation will be calculated every period or every, every month or whatever. The precision could be uh, set uh, automatically. Right, okay. Uh, because as you know, it's very easy to calculate it. And another, another, um, another thing is uh, calculate the year end. Uh, another, another adjustment is uh, in recoverable debts and provisions for uh, doubtful debts. So basically, the concept, uh, the difference between these two concepts is that the first one is that we we are very sure that we are not going to um, have this money. So if we have a recoverable debt, we 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 finish all the steps, all the stage to uh, to 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 have. Uh, the money back. So it's, it's an amount that we are not going to have anymore. So we need to decrease the, the, the account receivables. So, but in the terms of uh, doubtful debts, it's something that we are expecting, that we are not sure if we are going to lose this money or we are, if we are going to lose or we are not going to lose. It's like we are, we, we think that might be loose, but we are not sure. So in this case, uh, for example, when we finish the year, uh, we know if we are going to get the money back or or not so for for that reason this is another adjustment in, in recoverable debts if we figured out that we are not going to to have this money back we need to decrease the the uh, the segment of account receivable or if we have uh, an, an allowance for doubt uh, doubtful debts maybe uh, or, or the probability could increase or decrease. So this is another example of um, of, a, of an adjustment. You know? Maybe our provision is too high and at the end of the year, we can consider, okay, maybe my provision, maybe I, wa uh, I was so conservative and my provision, I was expecting that I would lose 100 pounds, but at the end, I'll check again and I feel that I'm not going to lose 100 pounds and I'm going to lose only 90. So we need to correct this mistake or according to the factors, or maybe we were expecting that a customer uh, wouldn't pay 10 pounds. At, at, and at the last moment, this customer paid. So it's, it's the moment that we can decrease this allowance for doubt, doubtful debts. So that basically the difference between uh, these two concepts is that, that the probability and in one, we are very sure that we are going to lose money and in the other might be, but both represent adjustment at the end of the year. So basically I leave the, the, the entries, the journal entries here but again, I don't want to enter a lot of this term because it could be very confusing uh, if you don't have this background in accounting. But if you want to check, these are the, the entries. 
in which we are affecting these two concepts. And the last one is accruals and prepayments. Accruals and prepayments uh, basically son, uh, are, are these, these uh, concepts that are not yet included. No, uh, prepayments are not uh, incurred, could be a prepayment, could be payments or expenses. But let's see some, some examples. Prepayments, uh, prepayment is when you pay an, in, an invoice or make a payment. So it means that could be a money that enter in the company or a money that uh, go out from the company for, ma for more than one period in advance, but uh, want to show this an, an monthly expense or your profit and loss. So think, for example, in the rent. So when you pay a rent, you pay probably if it's a prepayment, you could you it means that you will pay the money of the rent at the beginning of the period. Let's see January. So you could pay this rent at the beginning and in January to cover the next six months till till June. So some of the companies decide, okay, even when I pay the whole period, the, the six months at the beginning, I'm going to divide this expense every month, even when I pay at the beginning. So the companies tend to divide uh, the, the amount of money that they pay at the beginning uh, in each month. But how they recognize this prepayment? They affect the cash because at the end, uh, this prepayment uh, meant uh, uh, um, a money that the company uh, give to some, someone at the beginning. So they need to decrease the, the bank account, but they need to affect the prepayment account because obviously the six months, haven't passed. So this is how the rental expense will be shown. So we have here every month. So every month we, we pay 100 to 1,200 every month. So we are recognizing every month. And every month we are going to uh, recognize this prepayment, but this, this prepayment uh, won't be a prepayment because when January finishes, obviously when this, this, this uh, payment won't be a prepayment. Uh, this uh, will be a expense, a normal expense, but the rest of, of the months will be prepayment. So imagine that we are, in, I don't know, in November. So the prepayment would be only for the month of December. Or if we are in March, the, the, the prepayment uh, will be June, September of December. So prepayment are the payments that we have done, but the time hasn't passed. So we need to recognize this, a prepayment. Is clear? This is, is this clear? Yeah, no, no, that's fine. I've done this at work. Um, okay. Yeah. So, but what is the difference with a curl? So, that curl is think about electricity. Maybe you can you can imagine how much will be the amount that you need to pay for electricity, but. At this moment, you don't know what, uh, how much will be this amount of money. So probably you can consider, okay, I feel that in this month, I'm going to um, spend uh, 10 pounds every month for electricity. And then in order to recognize this amount, this probability, because not probability, because you are very sure that in a certain point of the year, you are you need to pay electricity. You can say, okay, I'm going to save this money, these 10 pounds, because in the future, I'm going to pay electricity. But I don't know how much, but I feel that I'm going to pay 10 pounds. 
uh, that is January. So in February, okay, I feel that this month I'm going to pay 12 pounds. So you have 10 pounds in, in January, and then 12 pounds in February. And then in March, you receive your bill of electricity. But this doesn't affect too much your financial statement because you have recognized a certain amount every 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 month. So the the, the bill of electricity doesn't uh, affect a lot your profits because you have recognized every month as a, a specific amount of electricity. So in March you receive your um, your bill your 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 electricity bill and you in in march you you know that you are going to pay i don't know a, a 20 pounds so you need to include the rest you have at the beginning 10 plus a 12 that was in march you have a 22 and in march you know that you are going to pay 30 so in March, you can recognize the, the, eight, the, the, the eight pounds that you need to cover, uh, that you need for, uh, to cover the 30 pounds. So this is an accrual when you are recognizing something, but you don't know the specific amount of money, but you are recognizing because you are like uh, guessing how much you will be how much you will you will pay so this is an occurrence so this is another another example of adjustments so basically this is the the the, the accounting entry in occurrence uh, when you have a, a when you have an occurrence um, it affects income statements. Again, this is only to show how will be present in financial statements. Okay, and the last one, the last, the last topic to finish the class because we have only a few minutes. Um, then, in section number three, we are going to talk about the uh, the preparation or final accounts for sole traders and partnerships. Uh, we are going to see the purpose of preparing these final accounts. Uh, we, can, we are going to see the most relevant adjustments that we see some of them, we, we saw some of them, and uh, we are going to analyze the financial statement of a specific business organization. So one of the, uh, we have two main purposes Obviously, we have more than these, but these are the most important. Uh, <clears throat> for a sole a trader or a partnership, uh, they need to prepare the financial accounts. Financial accounts are these uh, financial statements in which we have uh, done these adjustments and these uh, reversing entries in order to know what uh, how much uh, will be the amount of taxes because obviously everything uh, comes for taxes so one of the things uh, one of the objectives to prepare uh, financial accounts is to determine uh, taxes and maybe get uh, external finance some of the banks or most of them as for financial statements in order to see the position, the financial position of the company and in order to give the opportunity to have a loan, a bank loan. So uh, this could be an external finance or probably uh, if the company wants to get money from investors, the company uh, needs to give information about financial position and financial performance. And this is only possible uh, through financial statements. So these are the two, one of the two most important reasons to calculate taxes and to secure from external finance uh, from the bank or from external investors. 
and also is to provide a clear picture of financial position of the organization to its managers and to see what would be the future of the company or what would be the next goals uh, of the company to create a future plan. And these are the most uh, relevant uh, adjustments. We, we reviewed allowance for doubtful accounts or the inventory of solid sense reverse. We discussed a little bit a little uh, about these two concepts. So and additionally, we another relevant adjustment is revenue that has not yet been yielded. So probably we have a contract with a client and the client says, ah, okay, I'm going to have this deal with you. But probably when, when we have this contract, we haven't done this deal. So when we start to, to progress with this customer or to, to have the real operation, we need to recognize revenues and all the operations. So this could be another uh, adjustment that we can have. Uh, talking about uh, revenues or operation with customers. On the opposite, uh, we, have, uh, we can have expenses too, something that we were planning to have, uh, an expense that we were planning to, to have, but uh, that we have these expenses, this expense may, maybe at the end of the year, and we need to recognize uh, this expense. So we, we can have both of the sides we can have adjustments that come from a revenue or that come from an expense. Um, and yes, basically this is, and depreciation is another one. Uh, this is another adjustment, or maybe we can have adjustment that come from uh, international financial frame, uh, framework that we need to enter this uh, adjustment in order to be under a certain um, international framework or uh, probably we made a mistake or we can we saw that probably we need to clear a financial statement in the case of the income statement so yes these are the most common adjustments and the last part the last part, a financial statement of a specific business of the organization. In the previous class, we talked about the four main and mandatory financial statements. No one is a balance sheet that shows the, the things that the company owes and the company and the obligation of the company in a certain period of time. Income statement that shows the profit and loss of the company uh, that basically income statement show uh, the performance of the company during year, one year. Cash flow statement that uh, shows um, what are the activities in which the company has used uh, cash uh, according to, uh, to different group, uh, operation activities, financial activities, and according to, to these segments but focus on cash flows and then we have a statement of uh, shareholders equity that change that show the changes in the money that the that the owners of the company has invested and additionally this financial statement show dividends and shows um, if a, an investor invests more money and additionally uh, this financial statement show the profit and the performance of the company uh, during the year. So these four financial statements are mandatory, are, uh, they are uh, the most important. So it doesn't matter the, 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 the business of the organization these four financial statements are necessary in any type of industry and business. Another uh, is noted that normally financial statement uh, include or have uh, notes in order to explain 
every section of uh, the financial statement, for example, in balance sheet, uh, we can have a note that uh, could describe how the cash is integrated. For example, we can, in this note, we can see, okay, the company has uh, uh, money in this bank or uh, the company has money in dollars and in pounds and in Japanese gents or in, in gold or in silver. So the notes are parts of the financial statement that explain um, a, a specific segments of the financial statements are, these are part of the financial statement. We cannot see a financial statement without notes. We need to have notes because they explain deeply every segment of the financial statements. And but, for example, imagine a development stage comp a development company. Maybe this is a company that uh, doesn't have a lot of information, or they need to show how uh, is uh, its performance so for that kind of companies we have another financial statement or i wouldn't say financial statement i would say like another report that uh, could be a development stage um, report and for example another 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 uh, report is the front end uh, financial reporting that is this is more uh, for uh, banks or for um, financial institution because this industry tends to be more fraudulent and sometimes uh, some authorities or some uh, organization or international bodies ask for this kind of reports so but keeping keep in mind that uh, the mandatory the obligatory the 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 financial statement that we need to have is these four financial statements that I work uh, that I wrote here plus uh, not that okay so do you have any question no I think that's fine <laughs>